to um, be put into the survey, which you can access by going to tempe.gov slash forum. Uh, it's also uh, on our web page, which is tempe.gov slash country club path. Uh, the comment period for this particular topic will go through October 7th. And we hope all of you will take a moment after this meeting to go and provide us your thoughts. With that, I think we're ready for Chase. Chase, you want to introduce yourself and our guest, Ray? Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Uh, hi, everyone. Just wanted to say thank you again for taking the time to join us for our first public meeting for the Country Club Way Bike and Pedestrian Improvement Project. Uh, my name is Chase Wallman. I'm a transportation planner with the city of Tempe, and I am also the project manager for this uh, project. In addition, today we're joined by Ray Yapari Giri. He is our project manager with our design consultant, HDR, for this project. So he'll be talking about our 15% level design, which is what we'll be presenting today. And this is our this was a, a rescheduled meeting that was initially going to take place in March and has now been scheduled for now for the virtual meeting. So with that, Laura, if you go next, or I'm controlling slide, so I will go next slide. <laughs> this, uh, get everyone oriented where this project is. The project's generally located along Country Club Way. On the bottom right of the screen, hopefully you'll see the biker kind of making his way along the route for the project. But the project extends from Warner Road to the US 60 pedestrian bridge. Uh, the project is a holistic bike and pedestrian improvement project. So it includes a one mile concrete multi-use path from Warner to Elliott Road. Everything north of uh, Elliott Road is going to be on street improvements. So those are those could be in the form of uh, bike lanes or shared uh, shared lane markers. Uh, in addition, we'll be looking at traffic calming, the opportunity to provide rest nodes, uh, new signal at Warner Road. Uh, as well as to improve some of the ADA deficiencies that exist along the route. So the opportunity to be able to upgrade some of those ADA directional ramps as well. To give everyone a brief history of this project, the last time we went out to the public for this project was in 2017. Uh, the project was initially identified in our transportation master plan, and we presented the project as a possible project to compete for MAG design assistance funding in 2016. And what that funding did for us was uh, give us an idea of what the project cost would be, uh, as well as get our initial public feedback and some of the design priorities for the project. So we were able to prepare that design assistance report, understand the cost for this project, and held those public meetings in 2017. Uh, later that year, we completed the design. And with that, uh, the following year, we were able to compete for federal construction funding. So in 2018, we were awarded uh, just over 2.6 million in CMAC, which is a, a federal FHWA grant for construction funding. That was from Warner to the US 60. So now we're, we're, we, we kicked off the design in 2019, unfortunately delayed uh, due to the precautions with COVID. Uh, but now we are coming here for our first public meeting. So this is our first opportunity to hear since 2017 on our 15% level design plans, which Ray will be talking about later. But uh, what you see here is some of that public comment that we received. A lot of the priorities, uh, some of the higher ranking priorities included landscaping, safety, uh, as well as traffic calming for the corridor. And assuming this video works, uh, this will be a flyover video showing you the whole project corridor, corridor uh, kind of as an aerial flyover. So right now we'll be starting at Warner Road at the west side of ASU Research Park and working our way north to the US 60.
And now we're approaching Elliott Road, and this is Shutterfly Way. This is continuing north. And from here, we're exiting Shutterfly Way to an existing multi-use path that connects to the Western Canal multi-use path. And this is where we meet Country Club Way. And then this as we approach Guadalupe Road. And now we're getting to Watson Drive. This is where our project makes a turn and continues east for a little bit. And we're back on Country Club Way. To the left is Fuller Elementary School in Optimus Park. And that is Baseline Road. And now is the northern extent of the project connecting to the US 60 pedestrian bridge. And with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Ray Paragiri. He is gonna go ahead and give us an overview of our 15% uh, design. So he'll be showing you some conceptual alternatives that we have developed to date. Go ahead, Ray. Thank you, Chase. Um, good morning, everyone, or actually good afternoon. Um, can you go to the next slide, please, Chase? As Chase had in the uh, flyover, we went from Warner Road to US 60, and I'll follow um, that sort of direction as I describe the project uh, corridor. And the, the corridor is basically broken into five distinct segments. Starting in the south with Warner Road to Elliott, um, we'll be introducing a, a question path or trail, as well as a multi-use path uh, side by side. Um, we had two alternatives, one with the question trail uh, adjacent to the privacy wall uh, along the residence. And we'll also take a look at it, having it on the east side. So um, we're looking at two options. I'll get into that in more detail in the upcoming slides. Um, Outside the uh, ASU research park limits, we enter Elliott Road. Um, there is an existing signal now, I believe, uh, that was developed by Discovery Business uh, Campus. Uh, and so we'll be tying into that new signal um, uh, with either two options. We'll look at a cycle track or um, a side path where there's an existing multi-use path on the west side, and we'll uh, basically improve that to be more to city standards. Um, moving north, um, as we hit Western Canal, um, we'll be um, going onto the roadway like um, Chase described, and we're looking at two options. Um, one will have uh, parking on either side with uh, bike lanes on either side. Uh, we'll also take a look at a, another option where we'll have uh, the bike lanes with a buffer and parking on one side. Um, between Guadalupe and Western or Watson Drive. Um, our cross section will look at uh, bike lanes with parking and also sharrows with uh, parking or shared lanes as um, Chase mentioned. And finally, on our most Northern segment from Watson to the US 60, we'll also have some bike lanes with parking and sharrows with uh, buffer and parking. So with that, I'd like to go into more details with these segments. You wanna to go to the next slide? Okay, this slide shows two access points from the resident areas. Um, you can see those arrows in the blue. Um, the one to the south is Buena Vista Lane and the one to the north is Citation Lane. And so the, <clears throat> the picture that you show, is, that we show here is uh, basically a, um, a hammerhead is what we call it. And that's the turnaround point, but it also acts as an access point to an existing uh, multi-use pathway that's um, asphalt and has lighting that leads you to the ASU Research uh, Park campus. Next slide. So the red swath shows the 40-foot um, easement that goes from um, Warner Road to Elliott Road. Uh, the picture to the right shows you the equestrian trail um, that also um, has the same alignment for the multi-use path. Next slide. 
and this is an exhibit of what that uh, multi-use pathway is today. So, again, as I mentioned, between Buena Vista and Citation Lane, we have an existing uh, asphalt multi-use path, and it provides access, as you can see, to the ASU Research Park, uh, where they have additional network of asphalt uh, um, pathways to uh, get around the campus. Um, the uh, SRP has uh, existing lights um, along the uh, asphalt part or pathway, and so we'll be looking at um, um, providing some lighting as well as part of our proposed improvements. Next slide. To the north, as I mentioned, on the south or the northeast corner uh, is, is the Discovery Business uh, Campus. Um, they have a new developer coming in, and this is the uh, proposed plans for the new signal improvements on Shutterfly Way and Elliott Road. I believe it is constructed today. Um, so we will be um, sort of uh, dovetailing to this uh, new improvements uh, with two concepts that we'll be looking at. Next slide. And to the south, uh, as Chase mentioned, um, it ties into Warner Road, which is a five lane cross section with bike lanes in both eastbound and westbound. Um, we're looking at a signalized uh, crossing uh, to get to the south side of uh, Warner Road. And we're looking at um, either uh, uh, pedestrian signals or a pedestrian hybrid beacon or otherwise known as a hawk. Next slide. And so, as I mentioned, we were looking at two options. The one to the uh, on the on the north side of our slide shows the multi-use path uh, to, adjacent to the privacy walls. As you can see, um, there are some light fixtures that we're proposing with um, some uh, visors to prevent the light spillage uh, over into the private residences. And we'll have a buffer, uh, approximately six feet. Uh, and adjacent to that is a question trail. So the other concept below that just flip flops that and what we're trying to understand is we want to make sure that the light spillage is mitigated as well as privacy uh, because you're on bikes or horses, you might be able to see over the, the privacy wall. So we just wanted to make sure that we take a look at those considerations and make sure we incorporate it in feedback uh, uh, in design. Next slide. So this is an animation of our uh, improvements. Uh, the one to the left shows the improvements of the multi-use pathway with light fixtures, which are those black um, icons. Uh, we do show some trees in the buffers and we'll try to put as many trees as we can. The images to the right shows the um, multi-use pathway on the east side. Uh, there you can see Citation Lane where we'll have a uh, node area uh, or a resting point and we'll be seeing Buena Vista as well where we'll be showing another rest area. Um, again, we're trying to keep everything within the uh, uh, ASU Research Park easement and so um, there's Buena Vista. Um, as we get towards the southern end, um, we look at another rest area <laughs> almost as a gateway to um, the start of this project on the southern termini. Almost there. <laughs> I guess talking about the lights, you know, you'll see at Western Canal that they have some um, features uh, or iconic types of light fixtures. Uh, we're not sure exactly what uh, we'll be doing for the project. We'll obviously have some uh, concepts of what those light fixtures will look like, whether they be hardwired or or um, uh, solar uh, use solar panels. So um, as we get closer uh, to our 60% submittal, uh, we'll be nailing these uh, concepts down. Next slide. Here we have the intersection of Shutterfly and Elliott Road. We're looking at the uh, 
uh, I guess the intersection of Elliott and Shutterfly, where we see existing bike lanes, um, north and southbound uh, through lanes, as well as a left turn lane. Next slide. Midway, we can just see um, on the, the west, we have the eight foot existing multi use path, as well as a five foot existing sidewalk. Um, uh, on the west side, we do not have any driveway access. On the east side, we have the Discovery Park Business uh, um, Center driveways. Uh, I believe there's two of them. And as we get towards the end, next slide, uh, we have the Shutterfly uh, development, which has a driveway to the right as well as another access point for uh, deliveries. And to the left of that wall um, in the center, you'll see the existing multi-use pathway right there. Thank you, Chase. Um, uh, basically leads you to uh, the connection point to Western Canal. Um, obviously it's protected with bollards um, for other vehicles to not enter there. And I think the next slide shows that. These are another set of bollards on the other side too. So next slide. Um, so this is the intersection of uh, the proposed Country Club Way slash uh, Western Canal pathway. This pathway is on the north side of the uh, of the canal. So uh, we don't anticipate many improvements. Um, we are, are are looking at just improving uh, the connection points to be uh, to current city standards. But nonetheless, what you're seeing uh, here is to remain in place. Next slide. These next two slides show the concepts that were um, discussed with the city. Uh, this concept right here shows the uh, two way cycle path on the west side of the roadway. Um, um, we introduce a buffer and we still maintain the uh, two through lanes, but we eliminate the two way center left lanes. Next slide. And this concept keeps the uh, existing cross sections with the three lanes, uh, the two through lanes and the two way center left with the bike lanes on either side. Uh, but we're also looking at putting in the standard 10 foot multi use pathway on the west side, so we would uh, reconstruct the eight foot uh, sidewalk to uh, accommodate the 10 foot sidewalk. Next slide. And this is just an isometric view uh, showing those same improvements that I discussed. Uh, the one below shows that uh, for added delineation, we would add um, some flexible delineators uh, to show where the bike lanes are as well as uh, separation from traffic. Next slide. And this shows our, our two concepts as a flyover. Um, as you, there, is, there isn't any existing lighting along the west side where the uh, multi-use pathway is. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Right now we don't show that, but um, we're, we are considering uh, lights along that corridor for that segment. The city is looking at um, some pavement rehabilitation efforts. So um, as we get closer to uh, the construction date and understand those uh, schedules for pavement rehabilitation, um, we'll be taking a look at probably restriping some of the roadway uh, uh, to what our proposed striping is. Uh, so uh, there is no rework of the striping. Next slide. Here's the intersection of, of Guadalupe, and we're heading north to Sorry, yeah, we're actually we're heading south here. We're, we're, I'm sorry, we're going north south. Right I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, um, it's a 48 curb to curb width. Um, here we are at Western Canal. Um, there is existing sidewalk uh, on both sides of the roadway. Um, it was real quick through that video, but some of the sidewalk is adjacent to privacy walls. So there's not much we can do with that. So hence, we're looking at just doing some uh, uh, restriping uh, to accommodate uh, bicycles uh, to get them off of the sidewalk. Next slide. 
And so here is some concepts that we're looking at. Um, uh, we show that the, the two through lanes are, are 10 foot with two and a half foot buffers, bike lanes on either side and parking on the right for the top view. And then on the bottom view, we're looking at a Shero where we're having the bike lanes. I'm sorry, not Shero, but we're having bike lanes and travel lanes since we have the 48 foot cross sections and um, parking on either side. Next slide. And so from Western Canal to Guadalupe Road, again, this is the concept where we show um, the proposed bike lanes, uh, parking on one side on the left and parking on both sides on the right. probably mentioned too on this west side about the block wall cutting off the access to the homes on the off, off on the west there so there's no pedestrian access to those homes from the west as far as their frontage and the proposal for removing the parking thank you chase here we enter western canal and that's our tie-in point um, from Guadalupe. Um, this segment from Guadalupe to Watson Road is a 40-foot wide curb to curb. Um, there is some existing uh, com traffic calming treatments. As you can see, there's a speed hump there. Next slide. And towards the north end, this is where um, Country Club Way heads to the east along Watson Road. Um, next slide. And so from Guadalupe to Watson Road, we're looking at two concepts. Um, this area is uh, used uh, by uh, the residents for parking on both sides. So we wanted to maintain that. Um, the top concept shows that we're using bike lanes um, to separate them from traffic and maintain um, the parking. On the bottom, we show sharrows where we uh, separate um, the traffic uh, uh, from, I'm sorry, separate the parking um, from the sharrows with a buffer so that if, uh, if park vehicles open their doors, there's uh, some space there between the bicyclists uh, and those taking getting out of their cars. Next slide. And then we have those two concepts side by side. On the west, you can see that we have the, I believe these are the uh, uh, bike or sharrows, right? And on the, the right side, we're showing the bike lanes. So as I mentioned before, um, the city has scheduled uh, payment real pavement rehabilitation treatments along Country Club Way, north of Guadalupe. Um, and so once we get those schedules um, uh, finalized and, and understand how that coincides with our, our design and construction schedule, uh, we'll be trying to incorporate some of this striping uh, as part of that pavement rehabilitation efforts. And jumping right into it, we're uh, driving, I believe, northbound, Chase? South. Sorry, southbound. yeah. South. Okay. Keep me on your south. toes. Okay. So, you know, as you can see, there was some concrete um, crossings, like right here, where um, there's some noticeable um, bumps, I guess, or, or uh, uh, grade separation or grade, grade deviation. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at how we can um, mitigate some of those uh, those bumps and make it more of a smoother ride for both uh, the vehicles and the bicyclists. Um, as you can see, this is actually a great uh, video where we're showing some of the um, uh, 
trash cans that are out for the uh, the residents, and that's another consideration of, of you know if if we do have uh, some improvements, where would they be putting these um, uh, their trash receptacles along the, uh, the roadway, so that we have some safety uh, for the bicyclists uh, using this facility. Hey, Ray, did you take a look at the ADA also up there when we're doing this analysis and talking about ramps that are not compliant and driveways and alley ramps that are not compliant? Yes, yeah. thank, thank you. Um, so uh, we we did a field inventory of the existing conditions and uh, the sidewalk ramps as, some, as well as some driveways aren't ADA compliant. So we're taking a look at that and addressing those as part of our design. Um, so it'll be a case by case basis to, to understand uh, what the impacts are with ADA. I think we, we may be handing it over to you on this next few slides. Okay. Try to pull it up real quick, but if not, uh, it's having some technical difficulties here. So I apologize everyone. If not, we will just pull up the PDF of the PowerPoint real quick. Let me know if you need me to pull up the, uh, the uh, PDF. Yeah, sorry. We'll give her uh, give her thirty more seconds. If not, we will defer to that. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Well, Laura, if you do have it available, I might want to just share it until mine comes back up. If you're able. I'll need you to pass presenting over to me for a second. Okay. Can you see my screen, folks? Not yet. Okay. Okay, how about now? Not seeing it yet, Laura. Not seeing it yet. Okay. Hang on. It might just be still loading. Okay, how about now? There we go. All right. Not sure how far to go. You want to just I would, keep I would, I this? Go one more before that, Laura. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
All right. Yep. All right. You can go yeah. on to the next one. On. You'll have to talk on to it once. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, Sorry. Right. Thank I, you. Go ahead. I already talked about this one. I've already talked. Go to the next slide, please. This one, this oh, one's yeah. the Watson. This the Watson, Watson is a sixty-one proposed alternative. So this was the this was the last one we needed to share with everyone. Okay. Okay. We're having some little glitches here. <laughs> Apologies. Laura, okay. let's you, just you advance. Let's just, yeah, just uh, leave yeah. it on this. Yeah. One. Leave it on this. We one. discussed the two we different alternatives, two different alternatives that were side by side on um, <laughs> Country Club Way. <laughs> Club Way. I'm a, I'm apologizing here. I'm not sure if you guys hear my voice in a double <laughs> format. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, Ray, try try going forward yeah, one more time. If not, then I can take over. Go to the next slide, please, Laura. Go to the please, Laura. I'm sorry, it's jumping. I don't know how to make it stop doing. Laura, I pulled it up Laura, I pulled online it up. too. If you want to share, um, uh, to do the it. share permissions with yeah. you. Do the share permissions with you. Okay. And so maybe mute continue. everyone. Maybe mute everyone. All right, Lord, do, uh, do I have the share content ability? Okay, I think we got our audio fixed. Thank you. Uh, let's try sharing this. Okay, so Ray, I think you were you were just uh, showing everyone the existing conditions that we had from US 60 to Watson Drive. So now we're on the proposed cross sections. Okay, um, so we're maintaining parking on both alternatives. Uh, the top one shows our our sharrows with uh, buffers. Uh, so we have to use a 10 foot lane and a two and a half foot buffer. And the one on the bottom shows our share only with no buffer to provide a wider uh, space for both uh, the bicyclists and the vehicles traveling north and southbound on Watson or Country Club Way. Next slide. Yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of zoom in here since we won't able to won't be able to scroll for everyone. Just so they could see a comparison real quick of the plan view.
All right, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get it to the scale that we would want for this, unfortunately. This alternative showing the the buffer alternative in between the parking and the shared lane marking. And this section from US 60 to Watson Drive is our tightest corridor as far as our curb to curb width that we have. So we're we're very constrained with what improvements we're actually able to do here. So that's why both alternatives feature uh, just shared lane markings since we did not have the uh, appropriate width to be able to provide for a dedicated bike lane here. So the two alternatives, and these materials are available online, so you'll be able to zoom in uh, and get a, a get a better idea of what's happening in these alternatives. But the only, the only difference between these two here, they're both providing parking on both sides. One will just have a, a wider shared lane versus a more narrow shared lane, but an introdu introduction of a buffer in between the parked cars. And, uh, the bicyclists and vehicles. And then as I pull up our, our next steps, Ray, was there anything else you want to say on this corridor? Sorry. No, thank you. everyone for your patience. If we can't get this going here in the next couple of minutes, then we'll go ahead and, and go to our Q&A and finish off this PowerPoint. I apologize again for the difficulties we were having. Chase, do you want to maybe take a question while you're waiting for it to pull up? Yes, we could definitely start with that. Okay, we had a question come in. Uh, will the project address site visibility triangle at the northeast corner of Baseline and Country Club? Existing vegetation is blocking view from cyclists and second vehicles. Ray, did you want to take this one as far as the, the scope of what we're doing with the with the intersections and the arterials? Yes. So there is some existing signals at that intersection. We're going to be looking at um, updating those to current city and MUTCD standards. As part of the site distance, we will definitely make sure that, you know, if there's some um, maintenance on these uh, vegetation that we can coordinate with the city, uh, we'll do so uh, as part of our um, due diligence. Another one that maybe we could address, how long will this take to construct? Uh, we don't we don't have a time frame uh, we don't have a time frame yet for it uh, it would be it would be a minimum just comparing it to some of our other projects of a similar scope it would be uh, probably a minimum of eight months uh, but the contractor would dictate uh, their their schedule and as far as their their construction phasing for the project so we we plan to go into construction in 2022 and uh, that was Part of our next step slides, unfortunately, uh, we, it will be shared on our web page as well. We'll make sure that we have our our next steps and some of the content that we're, we weren't able to share today. We'll make sure it's on the web page. But we are just an overall project timeline. Well, this is our 15 percent, so our first time going out to you guys to the public for feedback. So it's a really our really preliminary conceptual stage. Uh, once we get our public feedback, we'll refine and pick a preferred alternative for each segment. And, and then continuing on there, once we have those alternatives selected, uh, we'll continue to refine the design and we have our inter internal review as well as other stakeholders like AC Research Park um, or our other various city commissions like Sustainability Commission or Transportation Commission. Uh, once we get that feedback from the public and all that, all those stakeholders will come back out to the public for a second round of public meetings to show that refined design in early 2021. Uh, we anticipate finishing the design phase at the end of 2021 and beginning uh, in 2022 for construction. And again, it would be a, probably a minimum of, of eight months just comparing it to some of our other projects, but we don't have a timeline yet as far as how, how long the construction would be. 
Another question that came in, will there be lighting on the bike path on the west side of ASU Research Park? I think this person came in a little late. Yes, uh, there, there will be proposed lighting. Uh, the, the distance from the, the west property line of ASU Research Park depends on the alternative that's selected. So uh, we, we show an alternative that has the multi-use path on the west side of, of ASU Research Park. And that would, that would bring the lights uh, a little bit closer to that privacy, uh, the privacy wall separating the homes. Then there's another alternative that has the multi-use path on the east side. And that would create more of a, more of a buffer in between uh, that, that space, at least 16 feet, uh, if, if that alternative were to be selected. But in either case, we do need to light our, our uh, multi-use paths. So that would be a part of the project. However, we don't have a specification yet on what that light would be. There is a potential that it could be a solar light. Uh, in any case, just like any other project that's maybe close or adjacent to homes, we'll be providing a, a shield on the back as well as specifying optics that that uh, make sure that there's no uh, spill back spill of the light into the adjacent at home. So that's a that's a big concern for us. So that's what we specify with all of our lights, especially ones that are close to close to any home. Uh, we have another question. Will the city of Tempe manage the landscaping on the new pathway between Warner and Elliott? Uh, yes. So any of our new improvements with the landscaping would be maintained by our uh, transit team with the city of Tempe. And Laura, I did, and I think I'm able to get at least one of our slides up. So I'm going to go ahead and and share that real quick, if that's all right. And Ray, did you wanna talk about um, some of our other design elements that will be coming back to the public early next year? Sure. So what you're seeing here is some of the design elements. These are our concepts from the node areas. Uh, there'll be some uh, shade structures as well as some. Um... Laura, do you want to turn off mute on everybody? Thank you. So as I mentioned, the shade structures, um, bicycle amenities, um, and uh, we'll look at also some drinking fountains as part of the uh, the rust areas as well. Um, bench seating. Uh, Jason, was there anything else that you wanted to add to to the rest or the node areas? Yeah, we'd like to uh, uh, include wayfinding as an element, uh, showing people routes, destinations nearby, uh, distances and directions. You know, time to reach the next um, uh, node or destinations in the corridor too. So wayfinding will be a key element uh, with the nodes. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, for not interrupting you, I didn't, I didn't realize that you were, you were on our, our presentation today. So for every, everyone, Jason Harrington is the landscape architect for this, for this project, uh, who is a sub for uh, HDR on this project. And he also led our preliminary design efforts in 2017. And yeah, this one, uh, this one is, just showing a potential landscape palette, but uh, this will come later for feedback when we come back out in early 2021. This is uh, more of a placeholder to show that we will be thinking about landscaping throughout the project corridor uh, with most of it focusing again on that ASU research park side. We had a question. Uh, the question is, did your equestrian contacts specify if horses feel trained if they are up against a wall? Uh, reference the ASU research area. Uh, 
I'll, I could take that question. Um, we need to just understand the um, the type of equestrian usage, the type of riders that utilize that area, whether they're side by side or they're in in a, in a line, so that we can understand how to accommodate them with the equestrian trail. So uh, more to come on that, but we are con making considerations and making sure we are uh, getting some feedback on the uh, the design for the equestrian trail. Laura, before we take any more questions, we'll just finish off this slide, just showing some of the potential elements that will be included in our next iteration of the design that we'll be coming back for later. Ray, if you just want to talk about some of the precedent images here of the medians. Yeah, so part of the uh, uh, traffic calming improvements, uh, we'll be introducing some uh, raised medians uh, with some landscape scape features, similar to this one. I believe this that we're looking at this just south of Guadalupe Road. Um, but if there's other areas where we can um, install some additional landscaping or uh, traffic calming improvements, um, we'll take a look at that as part of our design. Um, this one's on college and it just kind of shows an example. This is a chicane example. Um, so we'll take a look at that where we uh, uh, use this traffic calming method to uh, slow down traffic with some uh, side friction with the uh, uh, chicanes. Um, this one, I believe, is along University Drive. You can see some of the uh, 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 treatments on the crosswalks, uh, with the stamped asphalt, as well as the uh, uh, bicycle lane markings, uh, the green markings that you see on the bike lane. So uh, those are other considerations for this project that we'll be implementing. And as Jason mentioned, this is along Highline Canal. Uh, this is a wayfinding sign. Uh, that shows you where you're at along the uh, the route um, and also other um, uh, features along the uh, pathway. Uh, another uh, thing to note on this is uh, the solar powered lights. Um, you can see that it's adjacent to the walls um, uh, next to the SRP canal. Um, so those are things that we're considering and making sure that uh, those that are, are in view of that are, are giving that thumbs up. Um, the Highline Canal project also introduced a, a pedestrian signal. This is at Grove Parkway. Um, so this could be some similar treatment that we have at, uh, at the Warner Road crossing. Okay. Thank you, Ray. And no problem. If I can get our, yes, I can. Okay. And this was our last slide. So we eventually got there. Thank you everyone for your, for your patience with this. This is our next step slide. So again, we'll be taking this again to all our stakeholders and our commissions, and we'll be coming back out following this, this public feedback. We'll be coming back out in early 2021. We don't have any dates set yet. Uh, but then we will do a similar thing where we, we ask for the feedback and we have all these materials available online as well as another meeting on Saturday, which I think will definitely go smoother than this one. Uh, so if you wanted an encore presentation, we will be holding that on Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, both of them will be, both of the meetings will be recorded and will be posted online at www.tempe.gov slash country clubway path. And on that same website is where you'll find a link to the survey uh, to get your official comments in the record. Choose which alternatives you like for each segment and as well as uh, view any of the other uh, materials that were presented today. And thank you everyone for taking the time today. And if there's any additional questions, be happy to answer them. Anyone wants to raise their hand and ask live, I will look for your hands. I am not seeing any right now, Chase. All 
Okay. Yeah, I did, I'm just checking the chat. I know there was some coming in separate from the Q&A part. Mm. Or I don't see any additional ones. Uh, Mikel is saying public chat is disabled. Mm -hmm. We don't really have a way to disable it. Mikel, did you have a question? I can unmute you. Oh, there you are. There's a little bit of a delay. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not allowing Michelle to be on. Michelle. Hi, Lauren. How are, how are you? Good. You're still showing as muted, but go ahead. All right. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the panelists, and the, the designers know that there really are no equestrians anymore. We've lived here 30 years. In the first 10 years, there were horses. Every few weeks, we'd see a horse go by. For the last 10 years, my husband and I can't remember the last time we saw a horse go by. So just so you're aware of that, as it is right now, the dirt path they could easily ride on if they wanted to. Thanks for your comment. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Is there an email I can send my other questions or comments to? Uh, yes, Mikkel, if you want to go to tempe.gov forward slash forum, there's a survey and we'd encourage everyone who has any comments to go there and answer the, the couple questions on our survey, choose the alternatives that you prefer, and any any uh, open-ended kind of comments, are, you can put them there as well. Okay, thank you. Is there a proposed width for the equestrian trail? Yes, right now we're it's, we're showing at 10 feet currently. 10 feet for the equestrian trail and then trees and then the and then the multi-use path or vice versa, whether one's on the west or one's on the east. Yes, as as it's shown today, that's what we're proposing. It's uh there's about 40 feet of our easement to work within. All right, I have a question about the trees. Uh within that 40 foot buffer, many trees that are mature are only about 10 to 20 feet away from our privacy wall. So I'm, I'm assuming that means you're gonna take out a lot of those to get your width for the, for what you're proposing. Is that uh, correct? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume that necess necessarily. If, um, if there's a way to okay. avoid it, if there's that space. The path, if, no, yeah, if there's, if there's space to shrink down, uh, shrink down the buffer or otherwise go around, We've, we've done that in the past for mature trees where we've actually curved the path if we have the available space. It just depends what other utility conflicts. We're not going to remove any trees if we, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary to get the project in, but we're going to work within the any available 40 feet that we have, assuming that there's no utility constraints. All right, thank you. Anybody else have any questions for the panel? I see a hand raised for Mikkel. Laura? Yeah, that was Mikkel. We were just uh, speaking. Okay. With. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, we are right at that one o'clock mark, uh, unless there's any further questions. 
we will be able to end this meeting now and uh, post it to the website, hopefully tomorrow morning. Thanks everybody for coming. Great, thank you everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.